Okay, so today we were going to have our experiment on Newton's laws of motion. Okay, so we already know that we have two, uh, three laws of motion. The first law is what we call the law of inertia or equilibrium, where it states that if the net force acting on the object is equal to zero, so that means the object is neither moving or if it is moving, it should be moving with a constant velocity. And when you say constant velocity, the object is moving with a constant speed on a straight line. So neither the magnitude, the speed, change, nor the direction of your object. Now, second law of motion, which is uh, the focus of our experiment today, states that if there is <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Okay, so the second law of motion states that if there is a net force acting on the object, so that means the net force is not zero, like in the first law, that net force is equal to the mass of your object times the acceleration of, the, of that object along that direction. Okay, so that means if there is a net force, so that means the velocity of the object changes. So either the object's speed changes, it's speeding up or slowing down, or the direction of the object changes. The third law of motion, on the other hand, states that if you have two objects, M1 and M2, and they are allowed to interact with each other, the force exerted by one on two, it can be an attractive force. So this is force exerted by one on two. This is equal in magnitude as the force exerted by two on one but the direction is opposite. So when you push, for example, a table, the reaction of that table is that the table pushes you. And that is why we were able to walk on a floor because as we walk, we apply a force on the floor backward and the reaction of the floor is to push you forward, thereby, the floor was able to push you forward, enables you to walk. So this is Newton's third law of motion. So in this experiment, we're going to focus on the second law of motion with a little bit of application of Newton's first law of motion. In our experiment today, we're going to use this setup consisting of two masses, M1, and M2. M1 is a hockey puck resting on a frictionless table. So that means there is no friction on the floor, on the tabletop that exerts, that is exerted on the hockey puck. So this is what we call a smooth table. On the other hand, this M2 is what we call a hanging mass, and the two masses are attached by a string, okay, placed over a frictionless pulley. Okay, so that means the pulley is also smooth. 
And then we're going to release this object, uh, this system, and then we will allow this system to move. Now, how will this object, uh, this system move? We apply Newton's laws of motion. Right here, it is Newton's laws. Sorry about that. Of motion. Okay, and we're going to do this by using what we call a free body diagram. Or what we call FBT. So we start drawing the free body diagram by first identifying the forces acting on our objects. In this case, the forces acting on the hockey puck and the hanging man. So let's start with M1 and let's identify the forces. So as you already learned in your lecture, that forces, just like any vector, are represented by arrow. The length of the arrow and the direction of the arrow uh, describes the direction, uh, the magnitude and direction of the forces or vector. So let's say in this case, in the hockey puck, they can, we can identify three forces exerted on the hockey puck. The first force is, of course, the force of gravity. And that is always directed downwards. Okay, so this is the force of gravity. Let's call this Fg1. And this is equal to negative m g along the direction of y. The next force is the normal force. This is the force exerted by the table on the hockey puck. So this is your normal force. And lastly, a third force acts on the object, on our hockey puck, and that force is what we call the tension. And that is applied on your, uh, that is applied on your, uh, on your object along the direction of the The direction of the tension. So this is tension. Because this is a wire or a, a, a string, okay, in order for this string to have tension, it should be straightened up. Okay, so there are three forces acting on the hockey puck tension, the normal force, and the gravitational force. Okay. By the way, this should be M1G. For the hanging mass, there are only two forces acting on the hanging mass. Number one is the gravitational force on the acupunk, on the mass. So this is FG2, and this is equal to negative. M2G. And there is, of course, a tension on the string. This tension on the string is the same tension on the string because this is one full string. Okay, so here we have two forces, uh, two objects experiencing a set of forces on each other. Now, if the masses, as you will notice, as the masses are not the same, okay, this force or this mass will pull this mass. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, regardless of the amount of masses between the two, because there is no friction, this mass will pull this mass. Because there is no of, there is no force that will oppose the pull of tension on the string. 
because we already said that this is frictionless. However, if we said that this floor or this tabletop is have friction in it, so that means there will be an opposing force on uh, that there, there will be a force that will oppose this tension. So what does it mean? That frictional force will now depend on the mass of your object. Okay, but this time we're going to neglect friction first. So whatever the mass here, this mass will provide the force generally on the object. Okay, so therefore there will be a net force acting on the system. Therefore, it will accelerate. So you will notice here that the acceleration of the hockey puck, let's call that A1, that will be directed towards right. So this will move to the right. Okay, so this is your acceleration one. Okay, so let me move it here. Okay, now this object will also accelerate. This object will accelerate downward. Let's call it A2. This is the acceleration of M2. This is acceleration of M1. And because this is one system, A1 will be equal to A2 in magnitude. And let's call that magnitude as A. Okay, so this now sets up our equation. Okay. So when we're going to look at the Newton second of motion, okay, we're only going to look at the acceleration and the force along the direction of the acceleration. Okay, so let's do this. Now for num for M1, okay, the sum of forces acting along the direction of your acceleration is only your tension. And this is equal to M1A. Okay. Now for M2, the sum of forces acting on M2 will be equal to the force of gravity F2G, which is minus M2G. If you remember, there are two forces acting on the object along the direction of acceleration. In our case here, we did not include the normal force and the gravitational force on the hockey puck because those forces are not along the direction of your acceleration. Okay, apply Newton's laws for M2. This is now equal to negative M2. A2. The negative sign tells us that the acceleration is downward. It's positive here because the acceleration is to the right. By convention, anything to the right is positive, anything to the left is negative, anything upward is positive, and anything downward is negative. Okay, so this will be the two equations that we're going to consider. Because the goal of this the goal of the experiment is to calculate the acceleration. Okay. Okay. Now let's compute for the acceleration in terms of tension and the two mass, the two masses and the acceleration due to gravity g okay so let's do this if the tension is equal to m1a therefore we can substitute this here so this will now be equal to negative m2g plus 
M1A equals negative M2A. So now we can now calculate the acceleration using some algebra. So we can combine the terms with A in it, namely M1A, and then we transpose this to the other side. So this is positive M2A. And then we transpose this on the other side. So this is M2G. And then here we can factor out A to the other side. And then what will be left in this factor would be M1 and M2. And this is equal to M2G. So therefore, the acceleration, the magnitude of the acceleration of the hockey puck and the mass, the hanging mass, would be equal to M2G over M1 plus M2. And this will be the accepted value or theoretical value of the acceleration given the masses of your hanging mass and your hockey puck. Okay, and we're going to use this, uh, this results in our experiment today.